on that same note, though, I, I do want to get into this idea, and it's an idea that I've that have kind of kicked around in my head for a little while, in terms of, um, you know, why do people use religion as a tool for violence? Why do why does religion become an excuse for genocide? Um, you know, you don't believe in the same God I do, henceforth, I must kill you. I mean, you you see Christians and Catholics use that use that ideology to kill pagans you, you know you to kill spiritualists to kill nature worshipers um or you, you know and that's that's it's been used as a as as an excuse for that oh well our religion dictates that you know anybody that doesn't uh follow the rule of the one almighty god uh is 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 a worshiper of satan right like it, that, it witchcraft became this really awful word in primarily Judeo-Christian countries like America uh, because it was associated with the devil, with Lucifer. And really, if you look at the story of Lucifer, Lucifer was like the first protester. That's really what Lucifer was. Because he was like, yo, I protest what you're saying, dog. I think what you're saying is kind of crazy. Boom, he got shunned and he had to deal with all the, quote, sinners. Right. And so, I mean, some of those are pretty terrible people. Like, I, I think if you if you're somebody that commits genocide, if you're a serial killer, if you have no remorse for what you've done, stuff. Yeah, there's some bad people out there. And now that's all Lucifer gets to deal with. Even then, like Christianity and Catholicism, I, I, I would say the organized religion version of those of of, of those uh, ways of life, let's call it, uh, are the, the organized religion version of that is is manipulative. You know, oh, if you worship nature, if you care about nature, then you must be uh, someone that worships Satan. I mean, Satanism essentially, from, from what I've gathered, I've talked to some people that... Um, believe in the Satanic Bible and, and they're, they're nature worshipers. Right. They respect nature. I, I mean, I respect nature as an agnostic. I respect nature. I'm not a big nature guy. Like I'm not great on hikes. I'll go on some hikes every once in a while. I'll go camping every once in a while, but I respect, I still respect nature. I'm not a great camper. I'm not a great outdoors kind of person. I, I know that about myself, but I like having trees around. Like outside my window, I can I can see a bunch of trees. You know, I can see some I can see some things that are not grass. You know what I mean? Like living in the suburbs, I just saw grass all the time, uh, and that gets pretty fucking old. But you know, here is like I don't we don't have grass. We're, we're growing plants in our house. We're gro we're gonna move the my my housemate's gonna move those to uh, the garden. You know, like people around here have like I like that. I I respect that. That doesn't mean that I'm. I, I worship the devil, and even if I did, who cares? The devil is the the, the devil is is made out to be evil under the Judeo Christian religion because everybody needs an enemy. But he was the first protester. So if you like protesters, then guess what? I think you're kind of okay with Lucifer. You know. We talked about Israel in the last segment, but Israel's been doing that to is has been using Judaism to exterminate uh, Muslims in uh, Palestine. They call them Arabs. They don't call them Palestinians. They they look at them as uh, Muslim extremists that need to be stopped, and they use Judaism as an excuse, uh, and they use World War II as an excuse to do that. All it is is a point of control. They're they're using religion as a point of control, right? Uh, what's the big thing? Oh well, the Jews were persecuted for so long, and they be, they they, be, they that land belongs to them. No, it belongs to everybody that's there, and they were very open and welcoming to have you guys there. But it's just you use this religion to say, well, this is our holy land, and nobody else's, and nobody else can come there. And if and if you really have that fucking nationalistic. Uh, view of everything why do you allow tourists to come into israel what's the uh, uh, as, even if it's a fucking big war-torn country that's getting bombed by hamas all the time why are you letting tourists come through i mean kashmir is basically in the same situation india wants a hindu majority 
So they want Hindu majority in Kashmir. So they are they are, you know, imposing these authoritarian laws and uh, occupying a land that's not theirs. So Kashmiris are stuck in this in this fucking they're headed towards what's going to happen in Palestine. Kashmiris are going to be stuck in an open air prison sooner rather than later if if the international community doesn't stop uh both israel and india from persecuting palestine and kashmir but they're both using religion as the central focal point of it all to create a theocracy right under the guise of a democracy they're going to create a, a, a theocracy and you can see it right arabs don't have as much um weight in the decisions that are made in Israel. Muslims don't have that much weight uh, in the decisions that happen in India. Hindus do, and, and that's how the BJP talks. The BJP talks about how the Hindus are going to be treated better than the Muslims. Oh, we're going to Im implement the Citizenship Act, and if you're a Muslim, ah, you better prove it, but if you're a Hindu, we'll take your word for it. Right? That's a theocracy. These aren't democracies. Anything that gives a certain group of people a major leg up and, and demonizes and ostracizes another group of people is not a democracy. There's no equality in that society. And, you know, I'm not going to leave Islam out of it. That, that religion has called for violence within itself as well, and there are some extremist groups out there, um, some of them created by the West, <laughs> uh, because that's what happens when you disenfranchise a lot of people. And, and even, you know, within Islam itself, there there is examples of that. And again, I'm not an expert on the Quran or anything. Um, I, I have talked to many um, uh, Muslims before, and a lot of them, you, you know, the one, especially the ones that, have, that, that I was close and friends with, talked about how the whole argument of, you know, we need to push back against the infidel, anybody that doesn't believe in Islam, that came only after Muhammad was kicked out um, of his village and he was ostracized from his people. So again, where does that violent come? Well, where, where does this violent tendency comes from? It comes from being ostracized. It comes from being away from people. It comes from isolationism. When you feel all alone and you feel like you can't reach out to anybody and you feel like you're not connected to people it leads down this negative thought. It leads because the only thing you've seen is the worst of humanity. And if that's all you know about humanity, then yeah, you're going to, you're going to start spouting some violent shit about how, Oh, everybody's awful except for me. You, you know, it's, it's the same reason why you can't shame people out of particular belief systems. You can't shame anti-vaxxers into believing that vaccines are, are, are okay and they're helpful and they're beneficial. You can't do that because if you shame them, all they're going to do is retreat Right, your you're shaming is ostracizing, ostracizing them, and they retreat, and then they keep going down into f further into that hole. That the goal is not for for them to not be in, essentially. <laughs> these sort of thoughts, and again, all all of these are used for control, land grabs. You, you know, these sort of petty things. When religions are supposed to connect us to the divine, they're supposed to connect us to uh, a, a much larger plan in place, right? Like we are we are tiny cogs of a much larger machine. That's what religion and spirituality is supposed to do. But instead, they're used for these really small, petty things like power, land grab, money, you know, these petty fucking things. Um, so it's perverting it. It's perverting the idea of religion. That's what these colonizers do. Uh, it prevents the diversity of thought. To me, I think it's awesome that we have all these different forms of beliefs, these different forms of thinking. I think that's really cool. It, and and if we if we would have started to learn from each other rather than fight each other about it, uh, we would have probably evolved in our thought, evolved in our consciousness, be connected to something a lot bigger. We wouldn't be doing all of these awful things to the environment because we would have learned from the nature worshipers that, hey, we need trees around. We need to have local gardens. We need to have uh, fruits, vegetables, and stuff available to grow in our backyards as much as we do in, agri in, a, in, a, in a grand agricultural sense. We need to take care of each other. Oh, somebody in your community is hurt. You know what? The Christian thing to do 
is to make sure that they're taken care of. Some of their stress is alleviated. You know what? I'm going to make them extra food. I'm going to get the community together and every day somebody will go drop off food. My housemate does that all the time. That's what we, we do that in this community all the time. We would have evolved our consciousness a little bit more. The problem with these, with, with you, the, the, the religions, the way that they're used in our, in our society is it's all about the ego. The, the religion is tied to the ego. You know, anything that relates to conversion or genocide is all about the ego. It's these people saying, well, I have the right answer and everything you're saying is wrong. And if you don't agree with me, then fuck you. You're you're insulting not just my religion, but you're insulting me personally, my family and everything I believe in and everything I've built my life around. So fuck you. And either you believe in, in what I believe in or, or we kill you. And that's just ego. What's missing out of all of this is the fact that it is okay to be wrong. That's how we learn. That's one of the ways that we learn is we find out that, oh, shit, I've been wrong about this thought for a very long time. Let me see what this other person has to say. You know, I, I don't particularly know if this person has the right thing to say. Let me go find out what other folks are saying. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's how... You know, that's critical thinking. Critical thinking comes from saying, you know what? I've been wrong about some shit. I've had to admit I've been wrong about a bunch of shit. That's how I learn. That's how you become more curious. Even if you even if you don't think that person is, even if you don't think you're wrong, right? And, and you're like, well, this idea is different. Even if that perspective is, I'm curious to know what you what you believe in. I might not agree with it, but if it works for you and you're not, fucking genociding people or creating mass graves, then cool, man. Let's see how we can work together and grow our ideologies. Maybe something you're doing can, can, you know, hit my brain and go, oh man, I could probably implement something like that to, you know, better my belief, better my religion, better my community. But we're never going to learn with that unless we drop the ego and stop using religion and politics as a vehicle to drive our ego and because our egos get bruised, we act out and lash out at the world and hurt everybody around us. Let me look at some comments. Over on the uh, Rockfin, uh, Holly says, uh, Phoenix has an Indian school road. Uh, Nazi 60 years after 1888. Not sure what that's in reference to. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what that was in reference to, Holly. I'm uh, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> over on Odyssey, we got Jai Ganatha. Ganatha. Hopefully, I'm saying that properly. I apologize if I'm butchering it. Uh, it says, Doubt, thou doth protest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what happened. He, he, Satan protested just a little too much, and boom, it was game over. See you later, Satan. Don't let the clouds hit you on the ass. That's what <laughs> That's what happened with them. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button, and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now. Uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. 
And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.